Here's a trick. Do not stir it. Welcome to Hirschberger's Miracle Homestead. We invite you to join us every Wednesday and Saturday. Hi, this is Martha, and I want to welcome you to some kitchen action today. What are we going to tackle today? We're going to tackle the cornmeal dinner rolls. And this is a delicious roll. It's a soft roll. It's yummy to eat by itself. It's yummy to put some butter on or some jam or to make little sandwiches with. So whatever need you have, this would be just a good little roll for it. So it's actually a three-step process. Um, this is one, this is two, and back here is three. And I'll go across each one and then we'll just do it. For the first one, you'll need milk, sugar, salt, cornmeal, and Crisco. The second one, we need eggs, which I did not do out yet because it'll be a while before we need them. I have an empty cup here because we will need water, warm water. Then here is yeast, a little bit of sugar, bread flour. And since it'll be a little bit before we're using this, I just wanted y'all show, show y'all it's bread flour in there. I'm going to cover it up. Set it aside. I have the yeast and sugar covered up, the eggs and the milk. And then back here for when you actually do out the rolls, you will need cornmeal, butter, Crisco, yeah, and I'm going to be putting the first batch into here then when I have it cooked. You actually cook this part, four cups of milk. You need to cook this to the consistency of grits and put milk in the pot. Now, here's a trick I learned from one of my sister-in-laws. When you're wanting to heat milk, of course, you have to do it carefully because it'll scorch. If sugar is in the recipe, put your milk in and then sprinkle the sugar over here, over the milk. I often save just a little bit of sugar to add to the... to add to the mix of what goes in later then. Do not stir it. Let it sit, let it settle down to the bottom. Turn it on, and at this point, you can have it at a fairly high temp, but do not stir. Once you stir it and make that the sugar isn't settled on the bottom anymore, it's just mixed in, then you have to constantly stir so the milk doesn't stick. While that is heating up, I'm gonna put the rest of the sugar to the cornmeal, and that's the salt. Uh, give that a little stir. Okay, I'm taking a look in here at the milk. It still is not as warm as what it can be. And when you add the rest of the ingredients, you will have to constantly stir it or it will scorch. And I like to use a wooden spoon. There's different things you can use, but that has a flat surface. And yeah, I just like to use a wooden spoon for that. One thing you do not want to do is while your milk is heating, get involved in something, forget about it. It's time. The sugar will keep it from... Uh, so you put the cornmeal in first from scorching but will not keep it from boiling over so do not get involved in a project and forget about it Crisco okay we just pretty much constantly stir and be good to turn the burner down now. You could put everything in the pot and stir from the beginning, but to me it kind of helps to speed things up if you can get the milk heated quickly. Just keep constantly stirring. Well, it looks like the Crisco is all melted, but keep stirring. I like to put the, this bowl in a hot pad because it's hot going down in there. All right, it's boiling just a little bit, a slow, slow boil. And I have this down as low as it'll go. And that 
that she feels about right. Do you see that? I'm scraping it clean. The sugar protected the milk from scorching. That has been a good tip to know. I'm going to cover it with saran wrap, putting the saran wrap directly on it, and that'll prevent a crust forming as it's cooling. Okay, I'm going to pick this up, and it does not have a skin on the top, which is what we were wanting. If it does get a skin on, it's really no big deal because it all gets mixed in. Okay, if you have plenty of time, you can keep the uh, saran wrap on to keep the skin from forming until it's completely cooled down. But we do need to get this together before too long, so I'll just take it off and just keep it stirred every once in a while. Okay, I'm not sure if the speaker was turned off over there or not, but just in case it was, to give you an update on what we did, we put the uh, warm water, I just used tap water, in here and put the yeast and sugar in here. And then the eggs, I beat up. And this is down, it has a little bit of warmth to it, but not bad. Here's the flour. Okay, the yeast has proofed. I will put the beaten eggs into the cornmeal and the yeast. I should be over here so y'all can. A lot of bubbles. Get scraped down the sides and across the bottom, and another mix. All right, we'll just dump this in the flour and give it a mix. Oh yes, feels nice and warm right now. Just keep going on around. Be sure to get the bottom of the pot too because you don't want flour sticking in the bottom there. Okay, as you can see, the dough for the cornmeal dinner roll has risen and it's ready to go. So what we'll do is, the Crisco, is to keep my fingers oiled as I'm putting the rolls out. And you can make them whatever size you want, but I just bring it up between my finger and the thumb and give it a pinch. Okay, here's the melted butter. 
And you just want to go across the top. Put this in here and just do light spray of light coating of cornmeal on top. I am going to put them back in the oven and the blessing of having more than one oven is we can use one as proofing for stuff to rise and then we can preheat the oven at the appropriate time on the other oven to bake them. So right now, I'm putting these back in the oven to proof. Okie dokie, the rolls are ready for the oven. The oven is preheated to 340 on the convection oven. Go so down with the oven door. Oh, yes. Looking good, looking good. Butter here. Just go across the tops a little bit. Flip them upside down on this one, and then we'll get another one and flip them back. We go ahead and pull them apart where we think we may be pack packaging them. And now, as always, we'll close with a golden thought. Hello and welcome to the golden thought of this episode. I am Martha and this is my very, very special twin brother, Marvin, better known as Buddy. Mm-hmm. Our golden thought for today is the most beautiful music is played by the heart tuned to the will of God. Many years ago, a little friend of mine had a piano recital, and on the bulletin, it was a Norman Rockwell painting, and it had an older gentleman by the piano. His head was cocked, tuned, listening to the tuning of the piano, and beside him was a little lad with his hands behind his back, head raised, just singing away. To me, it's just exciting and thrilling to know that something in my life, something that I've done, something that we have done, can bring honor and glory to God and bring beautiful music to Him. Buddy and I both enjoy music. Yes, we sure do, don't we, bud? Uh-huh. So again, the most beautiful music is played by the heart, tuned to the will of God. Amen, buddy. Mm-hmm. Well, we hope you've enjoyed this episode, and if you have, we just ask you would like, share, and subscribe. And thank you to those that have done it already, and uh, we appreciate that very much. Thank you, and God bless. Our videos are about what our life is in general, which is family, kitchen action, Labrador retrievers, and gardening. Here are some other videos that you may enjoy. We invite you to like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, God bless.